The Digital Transitions DTRGC180 capture station is our newest capture system. We originally built this for the National Archives Record Administration in Washington, D.C. to replace their existing planetary systems. Their existing systems were slow and the image quality was not very high. So they knew we had the highest image quality system and they were very fast, so they asked us to build them a new bench that would have a very large capture bed to digitize books that could be opened 180 degrees. This system is a dual platen book cradle that can digitize books of up to 25 by 35 inches in size. It also comes with a hard top so you can digitize 30 by 40 inch materials. It can also use our new DT film scanning kit if you want to digitize film holdings as well. We are working on a great project with the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. They're digitizing uh, their entire FSA collection which is the Farm Security Association materials. They're digitizing all the film of Dorothea Lang, Walker Evans, and photographers like that. When they first approached this collection, they were going to digitize it with film scanners, which would take over 25 years to do. We provided a solution that uses phase one digital backs in our DTR cam film scanning kit that would do the work within three years without any sacrifice to quality. And in fact, it proved to, it proved to have higher image quality than traditional scanners. When imaging film, the hardest challenge is always the materials itself, and that goes to any collection. Um, although the systems are able to produce a capture rate of one per second, it's always the materials that determine the rate of capture, because ultimately you want to preserve and not damage original material. So for instance, glass plate negatives are going to be a slower capture rate than strip film. So the other key feature when designing these types of systems is, is what's called pattern holders. You have to make a pattern hold that's easy for the operator to use and load and to ensure that the films are hold flat and that will not damage the original materials. My name is Eric Philcox and I'm the owner of Pixel Acuity. In the early years it was all film based, you know, originals, you know, so you'd actually be doing reproductions of original material on film. Uh, nowadays it's all digital and we're actually starting to digitize the film that was shot back uh, in, in the early days. Um, so it calls for a wide range of uh, solutions. We are involved in a project to digitize over 600,000 original film materials over a four-year period. For this reason, uh, we've been having to employ rapid capture solutions. You're looking at an average of uh, 150,000 items digitized per year. Over the first uh, five months of this project, we've actually been able to digitize 100,000 items of this collection using phase one cameras and digital backs and reprographic station. The more challenging thing is, is digitizing film. That usually requires someone who has more expertise because you have to interpret the way the film should look. Uh, there's a famous quote by Ansel Adams, which I'm sure I'm going to get wrong, which is, um, he considered film negative as a composer's score but the final print is, actual, is the actual performance itself. So ultimately, you want an operator who has some sense of how to digital, how to convert a piece of film to a positive representation of that image. So that takes a bit more expertise how to do that. Even though, and what's great about the digital camera systems is that there's so much dynamic range in the phase one digital back is that you have a lot of room to interpret that file thus allowing the operator a lot of creative freedom in how to best make, uh, make a best facsimile or best interpretation of that scene. And what's great about the whole Capture One and Phase One system is that the software really enables you to produce your own unique look. I mean, most canned software that comes with like a flatbed scanner has a built-in look and you just can't change it. What's great about the high-end digital systems is that it's really open to the operator and it gives the operator the chance to express their own artistry and unique look. Most film has around an eight to nine stop um, tonal range, you know, that, it, that you can see on this film. Um, and because the capture solution that we're using is a phase one digital box, it actually has a 12 and a half stop uh, tonal range that uh, is, is visible. So this allows us to capture all the data that is on that piece of film. When digitizing reflective materials, you use what's called a process control techniques. You, use a, a, you could use an inline target. Uh, we prefer to use the Image Science Associates uh, Golden Thread Object Target, and that has uh, numerical values on the color swatches. And then what's nice about that system is that you can just dial in the capture 
to the aim points on that target or to make sure that your tone scale is absolutely accurate. Once you nail your tone scale and get the neutrals neutral, you're about 95% of the way to have a perfect color and perfect, and perfect uh, tone response. What Don Williams and his systems, targets, and software does for us is provides this instant validation that our system is performing. This system of, of instant validation uh, gives us peace of mind when we sh are shooting 10,000 items a week and knowing that we won't have to go back and reshoot that at a later date. Um, that's important not only to our bottom line, but to our clients as well, uh, because the additional handling of the material costs money as well. Uh, I am Don Williams. Um, for the first 25 years of my career, I was uh, an imaging scientist at Eastman Kodak. And uh, when I left Kodak five years ago, I started my own company, Image Science Associates, uh, dedicated to providing tools uh, and resources and education uh, for doing good imaging, especially uh, concentrated on uh, the cultural heritage imaging uh, community. I sit on several different ISO standards committees. I'm a technical expert. I'm also the editor on ISO 12233, and that is the ISO standard for measuring digital camera resolution. The FAGI uh, is the Federal Agency Digitization Guideline Initiative. And it's a forum and group of interested federal agencies in the U.S. who have a stake in doing good imaging for their collections. Uh, since many of them don't do the digitization themselves, they do a lot of outsourcing, it is in their interest to make sure that uh, they get what they pay for. And, that, uh, and they get a good product. So these federal guidelines are meant to ensure, and they literally set performance guidelines, imaging performance guidelines, for digitizing, as an example. Uh, if a contract goes out and says we want to do, you have to do 400 dots per inch, there are actual ways of measuring that according to international standards on whether that is a true 400 dots per inch, or whether it's just marketing hype. And it's very easy to distinguish that with the targets and the software that complement those targets. All right, Peter, well, we got a lot of the next game to do, so let's switch this up. The DT RGC 180 Capture Cradle is an extremely versatile system that enables you to easily switch from digitizing bound materials to other objects, including film. The DT Film Scanning Kit is an accessory for our reprographic systems utilizing the DT RCAM. This system accessory is a rapid capture solution that will deliver preservation level files and is also more than 240 times faster than possible with flatbed or drum scanners. The DT Film Scanning Kit is currently being used to digitize the world's most valuable film holdings, including the FSA collection at the Library of Congress. This system incorporates a cooled transilluminator to digitize all types of photographic plates, as well as negative and positive film from 35 millimeter up to 11 inches by 17 inches, and includes all the necessary film pattern holders. The DT Film Scanning Kit also includes the Schneider 120 millimeter macro lens and extension tubes. So let's load this target in there so it can help us with some focus. There you go. All right, now what we'll do is we'll crop this target and we'll actually run this through the Image Science Associates software to validate that we are achieving the sampling efficiency that uh, we're shooting for. So what we're going to be doing is taking the negatives out of the sleeve, placing it in the holder, and then putting the top on the holder to keep the negative strips flat. It's a good thing I have lots of darkroom experience. That definitely helps this process. As you can see, the digitizing only takes a couple, a couple seconds. It's the loading and unloading carriers that is the time-consuming portion. My preferred method of uh, working would have multiple carriers so that while I'm shooting, you could be loading additional carriers. Let's take a shot to see, make sure we're lined up. So after this first shot, what we need to do is we need to actually apply our image settings. You want to draw your crop around the image area. 
All right, we'll do our rotation. And what's great about Capture One is that you can just go ahead and inverse the negative right from Capture. So we're gonna just switch up this uh, curve. Get a little white balance, we don't need saturation. Now you can see in our histogram that we're not clipping any information. We're capturing all the data that's there. So that's how you set your base exposure? It's based on where the, where the histogram's lying? Where the histogram's lying. I mean, obviously you don't want it bumping up against either edge. You want to make sure you're getting all the information. You don't do the final tonal adjustments here? Right. So we will then start the process of shooting. Do I need to move the crop now? We don't actually move the crop while we're shooting. That's actually done post-processing as well. Because you have all that extra resolution that we can get away with it. Right. We know it's in the image frame. The benefit of this is that the actual scanning process takes a 60th of a second. One handy feature is that we already have the crop size in place so that as we progress, we don't need to actually change the size of the crop. We can just move it. We have a new tool called a multi-crop tool that's unique to our system. Since these digital backs are so high resolution, you can actually photograph more than one page at a time and do an automatic page split. So this is a unique solution that we can offer our clients. And phase one was, you know, listen to this need and have built a custom piece of software that we can use and offer to our client base. So now, instead of capturing one page at a time, the user can capture two pages at a time, or even more. So for instance, if you have a photo album that has six photographs per page, you can use an IQ 180 system and then you can drop the, you can draw the six crops and repeat those crops page per page, thus really enhancing the workflow of the operator. I'm going to digitize a negative from the 1800s, a very, very old, early piece of photographic history. And what's fantastic is that we get to digitize it on a brand new modern system that's going to preserve all its detail. The capture rate of this system is 1 60th of a second. To get the same quality on a flatbed scanner or even a drum scanner would take you up to 10 minutes per scan. So this enables for multiple outputs of the same file and uh, really helps in your post-production post efforts uh, by minimizing the number of programs you actually have to open up the file in. You know, the, the program that you capture in, that is your capture client, is the same pro program that you do can do your post-production. And really, by the time you are done shooting, most of your post-production should be done already. Since Capture One being so powerful in terms of point of capture, and we've already kind of started our post-production process. You know, we have our crop in place. We have our inversion in the software, and we already know via the histogram that we have all the necessary data. Um, now, depending on the image type, how it was shot, how it was exposed, we may, may need to do some adjustments uh, after the fact, and that's what really the post-production mostly centers around when you're doing film scanning. Um, in this case, they were fairly well exposed uh, film, so really what we're going to do is just making it a little bit more visually appealing, but while still retaining all the information in the file. You can see with our histogram, we're not bumping up against either side, we're not clipping any information. So in that sense, it's ready to go. Now, a lot of times with strip film, you'll have a whole series, a whole roll that is maybe shot with the same exposure. So what we can then do is select all of the images that were shot at the same exposure, same time, same lighting, and then just batch apply any exposure adjustments that you want to make. At this point, these images are ready to process. You can process them to any type of derivative that you may need to supply, a 16-bit TIFF, 8-bit TIFF, a JPEG for web use, and deliver them directly to the client. Some clients are very particular in terms of what they need for output, and some of them might even surprise you. Uh, Harvard University had a large collection of Ben Sean negatives that they wanted to keep the negative as an object, meaning that they didn't want the inversion done to the negative. But of course, an inversion needs to be done to disseminate the material to a broader audience. So that is one of the fantastic assets or tools available to you in Capture One. Not only is it great 
uh, capture client, it's a great post-production tool. Because remember, you never actually edit the raw file. All you do is set parameters to how to interpret the raw file. So the tool I'm going to use today is a clone variant tool, so I can show you how to make both an inversion and keep the positive of a scan negative or a capture negative. All you have to do is say clone variant. It keeps, um, it keeps the same crop and all the information that you originally had. And all I need to do now is undo my inversion process. This way I have what the curator wanted, which was to keep the negative as an object in and of itself, and also have a rendered inversion of that same piece of film. Truly a fantastic piece of software. For more information, please contact Peter Siegel, Director of the Division of Cultural Heritage.